Hello and welcome to another Teenage Church. It's good to see everyone this morning. Glad you could join us. Okay, let's start with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for this opportunity to be before you once again. We thank you for all you're doing in the earth. We thank you, dear God, that you allow us to participate and to be a part of your program, dear God. Help us not to miss where you're active at, dear God. We thank you for the life of each person watching, dear God. We pray that you would just show them what you've called them to be, what you called them to do. We pray for deeper insight and revelation into who you are, dear Heavenly Father. We also pray, dear God, for more people to be vaccinated, and we pray for the lifting of this COVID-19, uh, dear God, virus. We pray, dear God, that you'll restore things back to the way they were. We give all glory and all praise and all honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so you ready for the joke of the day? Okay, what's the favorite sandwich of a shark? What is the favorite sandwich of a shark? Peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. <laughs> Peanut butter and jellyfish. <laughs> All right, let's get started for today. Uh, the title for today is, Are You Prepared for the Test? Are you prepared for the test? And I want to talk about a vital component in preparation for the test. Okay, I want to talk about your prayer life. If you can open up today with me in Matthew 4, Matthew 4, we're going to talk about the temptation of Jesus. Okay? Matthew 4. Got it? Okay. When Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil... He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's the first test. Second, then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him again, It is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil tries a third time. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you. If you will only fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Amen. Okay, I'm going to show you a brief video from Superbook. This is not my video. I don't own the rights to it, but this is from Superbook. Superbook. Okay, you can watch this really fast, and then I'll pick up with the lesson. All right? Okay. If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. <laughs> Let me show you. Another perspective. You have to help Jesus. I will help when it is time. What are you doing? There they are. You may not intervene either. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them. Because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give them all to you. If you will worship me. Did he just offer to rule the world with Jesus? This is Satan's domain. And Satan is tempting him to defy his father. Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you must worship the Lord your God, and serve only Him.
Michael, where did they go? We have to find them. <gasps> Michael! If you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect and guard you. And they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will catch him if he falls. That's when you'll jump into help, right? The scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Very well. I shall return when the time is right. Okay, I hope we enjoyed that clip. All right, I want us to see several things here, okay? When I'm talking about the message here, when I'm talking about the, the test, I'm not talking about the test you're going to face in school. I'm talking about tests you're going to face in life. One of those tests, as an example, could be a test that you face in school by preventing you from getting your degree or other things. But I'm talking about the, the test that you face in this life, okay? Jesus, in the scripture, Jesus has not started his ministry just yet. He's about to start his ministry. He just finished fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Then the devil came to him when he was weak, right? Physically weak to do what? Tempt him. But while he's physically weak, spiritually he's strong, right? Because it's not just that he gave up food. That's not what fasting is all about. It's also a big part of fasting is praying, why do we pray? What's the purpose? If I just give up food, right, I'm dieting. I'm not fasting. Why do we pray? The purpose of prayer is to get the mindset of God. Not so much to change God's mind, but so God can reveal the plan to me. So that I can know what his perfect will is. So that, I, that me and God, can, God and I can be on the same page. Okay? So I pray so that God can what? Tell me the plan and so that God can change me. The purpose of prayer is to change me, not the, just the situation or circumstances that I'm praying about, right? God can change those situations through prayer. He does. He does listen to our prayers, but he can also change me in the process. Sometimes he can change both. He'll change the circumstance and he'll change me, right? One of the changes it's always a positive thing when you change because God has you to change. But one of the changes is I grow, grow deeper in my faith in God's ability to handle complex situations, right? But Jesus has been preparing for the test in this scripture. In your life, you are going to face challenges. You are going to be tested. The COVID-19, having to go to school online, right? And having to maintain discipline, having to go without seeing friends, having to go without some of the conveniences that we have has really challenged us personally, right? And that's just one test. Also, some people were tested as far as their mental well-being during this time period, having to be locked in the house. Some people were really challenged saying, what? I'm gonna go crazy if I stay in this house, right? No, you won't. God will keep your mind. God will keep your mind. You do need time outside, but God is a keeper. And God does keep mind and sanity and mental health. And also it's good to talk to parents. It's also good to talk to a counselor if we need to. Or uh, someone in church, youth ministry leader, or, or someone of that nature, okay? Because sometimes people do need help out of their circumstances mentally or otherwise. But you are going to be tested. Life comes with challenges. Life comes with adversity. It does. That's a part of life. That belongs to life. The good news is... God has given the keys to pass the test. And one of the major keys that you're going to need to pass this test is an effective and active prayer life. How is your prayer life? Are you talking with God to what? Get his plan for your life. Individually, but also collectively. He has a collective plan, but he also has an individual plan. And God will share, not necessarily every single detail, but he'll tell you the steps that you need to know, right? To get to the next phase of where you're supposed to be, okay? But if you notice here, 
when Jesus is tempted, when Jesus is tested, what does he do? He keeps referring to the word of God. So let me add this point on that too. You have to know God's word. Well, how am I going to know the word if I won't read the word, right? I have to read his word, okay? I have to read his word, okay? That's the only, if you notice how he's resisting the devil here, he keeps throwing what? It is written. It is written. It is written. He keeps throwing back the word of God back to him. So you have to what? To get the devil to flee from you, to resist the devil, you have to not only just pray, but you also got to know the word too. You got to be biblically based. You got to be based in the word. The things you say to him has to be what? Based in the word. Because here's the shocking part. The devil knows who God is, right? And he knows God's character. So he knows what? Thing, whether what you're saying comes from you, from within you, or whether it comes from what God, right? Our words have no power. God's word has all the power, okay? So if I want to change circumstances, if I want to change situations, if I want to change my life or the lives of other people, I first have to start with what? Praying so that God can what? Impact me and my perspective. Sometimes I'm the problem and I need to change. I know some people go to class, it's that teacher that don't like me, that teacher always got something bad to say about me, that teacher always is doing this, or that teacher's always doing this, or this person over here, she don't like the way I dress, or she don't like my attitude, or she doesn't like the way I look, she doesn't like this, or he doesn't like this about me, he doesn't like that about me, and I could never be his friend. Sometimes the person that needs to change is you. And that's part of what reading the word of God and what prayer does, communicating with God, that's, that's what it does. You can't pray and read his word and stay the same. It's not possible. God changes you. If you belong to him, he changes you over the course of time. It's not always an instantaneous change, right? That's for some people, but not for most, where it's a process of where I consistently what read and pray and God does what shifts my perspective, my mentality, the way I look at things. At this time, Jesus is physically very weak, and he's very hungry, and he's very tired. But while he's physically weak, and while his stomach, he's feeling hungry, and it sounds like a good idea to what? Turn these stones into bread, right? I haven't eaten in 40 days. I need something to eat. But Jesus knows the bigger picture. How does he know the bigger picture? How does he know how to stand up and resist Satan? Because what? He's in constant fellowship with God. Constant communication with God. Prayer. That's all prayer is. Constant what? Communication with God. And communication is not just one-sided. It's a two-way street, right? So I talk to God, but God also talks back to me. Sometimes I have to sit and be still and be quiet, cut the Xbox off, cut the PlayStation off, cut the, the TikTok off, cut the cell phone, the iPad, or whatever device it is. I have to cut it off and listen to hear what is God saying at this hour, at this moment, what is God saying to me? And sometimes it'll be things that I want to hear, and sometimes it'll be things that I don't want to hear, Right? God's perspective is not always going to just come down and say, you know what, you're right, Michael. You, and things should be this way. Things should be that way. God is not going to agree with me, especially if my perspective is sick. God is going to give me his perspective, his point of view, and he's going to refocus me and show me where I should be, what? Pointing towards. Okay? And sometimes his perspective will be in direct opposition of mine because that means my perspective has to change. That my perspective is what? Sometimes wrong and we have to be careful of that we have to be really really careful of that and make sure that we are preparing for the test how do you prepare for the test because the test is coming and i'm not just talking about final exams although we do need to finish strong on those this quarter okay but i'm not just talking about that i'm talking about the major life test is coming some of us are going off to college and we're going to face major tests sometimes it's going to be in the sickness of what a relative Sometimes it's going to be the loss of a friend, but the test is coming. How do you prepare for the test? You don't wait till test day and just say, I'm going to wing it. See what happens here. That is not the way to prepare for a test, right? Okay. So you want to pray consistently and get the mindset and perspective of God. You are welcome to join the adults in prayer on the prayer line. 
Call in. Join in on the prayer line. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Call in on the prayer line. Join in. Okay? We can all pray together as a collective church body. All right? But you got to pray. And secondarily, preparing for the test involves reading God's word to be built up. I know people I, People tell me, like teenagers all the time, but it's boring, Mr. Mike. You know, is there an updated version? You know, because this stuff is like 2,000 years and older. Is there an updated version? Because some of this stuff is not relevant to today. The Bible is still relevant. The concepts that it teaches are still relevant today. I promise you that. Okay? So get into his word. Get into God's word. We're going to pick up here next time. I don't want to make it too long because I know some of us will check out after a few minutes. All right? All right. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Finish strong when your final exams in this fourth quarter. Oh, you will have a message this month on Zoom from the pastor. We're going to let you know when that is so that you can uh, call in on the Zoom call and have live church. All right? Have a blessed Sunday. Until next time.